I'm going to demonstrate the heat kit BF1 BFO. This BFO came out in the late 50s and sold for 1995 at that point. Of course, if you account for inflation, that would be almost $200 today. Uh, this uh, the heat kit BFO was known for its instability. I'm not saying this one is any more stable than the other. It does have a couple of uh, modifications that have been added to it and I think the modifications only have to do with whether you want to key your transmitter from the BFO. I couldn't see any operational change with it at all but that's what this switch is for if you want to use grid back keying or cathode keying but if you just want to operate it as most people operate it you just can ignore that switch. Uh, but in any event I do have the sheet for modifications and I will include that and I will also include an instruction manual for it. So uh, then we want to see if it works and right now uh, the important thing is we need to have at least two mils of grid current uh, to drive the DX40. Uh, right now it's uh, set up for let's set it up for 40 meters and uh, see what we have. We're on the 160, 80, and 40 meter option. And so we will set it up uh, for that and see what happens. Put it in, put it in the tune position. We only, I only see one mil of jig current, but let's peak it. There we go. And uh, I've, I have the drive level very, very low. So uh, that's on 40 meters. Uh, right now and then we will try it on 80 meters okay we still have this switch set up in that position and we're going to try it on 80 meters see how much grid current we get there we go we have about two mils of grid current there and I could really run that up if I really wanted to uh, but Okay, so we have a, uh, that's how much grid current we have there. Uh, we're going to now move the switch over here because it uses a different, slightly different circuitry. We're going to check that circuitry out on 40 meters. Okay, we are now on 40 meters. And we're going to check that out. Let's see. Let's get that in. Oh, I should key it. We need to have a steadier hand. And we have about two mils of grid current there. And I haven't even peaked it up there. Let's back it off a little bit there. So that's on 40 meters. Okay. And we'll try it on uh, 20 meters, uh, see what we get. But it uses the same circuitry, it just uses a, a harmonic of it. But we'll just go up on 20 meters. Okay, now we're on uh, 20 meters. I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> Not much light on here. And we have about two mils of grid current there. There we are. 20 meters. And there we are. Now we're on 15 meters. And let's check the grid current. It's a little low here. Let's see if we pick it up. There we go. That's over two mils there. I don't know if we get any drive on 10 meters. 10 meters has always been a problem, but we'll give it a we'll give it a shot. Okay, we try 10 meters. We're up around uh, 28, uh, 350 somewhere in that area. Frequency's a little bit off. I'm sure during shipping it may change and uh, frequency can be adjusted. There's two slugs in here. You can use just a regular screw, small screwdriver to adjust the frequency. So that kind of shows us that we are operating on all the bands that this is assigned for. Uh, I don't make any guarantees other than what you see here. 
I do a video because I want you to see that it actually operates and I also do a video to avoid uh, people complaining that it didn't work because it's working and um, I use the video to prove that it's working.